Well, I've rather given up on using the computer and my hotspot for the day. So I brought out my trusty little phone. <laughs> I don't want to miss telling you this bedtime story. A tale of two mothers. And here they are. One is the earthly Jerusalem, and the other one is the heavenly Jerusalem. The earthly Jerusalem, which now is, that's a picture of the Temple Mount with the Dome of the Rock, and modern Jerusalem, a very natural picture, earthly Jerusalem, which now is, and here is heavenly Jerusalem, which is above heavenly Jerusalem. So there are two Jerusalems, one earthly and one heavenly. And our bedtime story is taken from these two Jerusalems. And Paul in Galatians chapter 4, he told us a story, an allegory, he called it. And an allegory is a story or poem that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning, an allegory. So the tale of the two mothers is an allegory that Paul is going to tell us. So as a foundation for telling this story, I want to go back to Paul's words in Galatians chapter 4. The Galatians were in danger of falling back under the law. They had been converted under Paul and been born again. But then the Jewish proselytizers came along and told the believers that they also had to adhere to the law of Moses if they wanted to be sure of their salvation. So you had to have Jesus plus in order to be saved. The cross was not enough. So this is what Paul is responding to and he's wanting to explain to them that nothing needed to be added to the work that Jesus has done on the cross. So beginning, I'm reading from the King James Version. Uh, let's pray first. Father, this is such a wonderful and thrilling and life-giving story. Lord, I don't hear many people tell this little bedtime story or tell it at all anywhere. But oh, Father, the liberating truth that is in it because when we realize that we have been born of the Heavenly Mother, then when we are dealing with sicknesses and diseases, we know that they have been birthed by the Earthly Mother that is in bondage. But we have been born of the Heavenly Mother, and she is a free woman. And therefore, because she is free of earthly entanglements, the curse that Adam loosed, and we have been born of her, Father, then all the benefits that came with our new birth and being born from above. Oh, Father, how far-reaching they are. And, Father, they include our physical bodies. And so, Lord, I thank you that this is a healing message, and you're going to give those that hear it ears to hear it that way. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, in uh, chapter 4, verse 1, Paul says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant, even though he's Lord of all. But he's under tutors and governors, teachers, until the time appointed of the father. Then he goes on to explain how we also, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. 
Now he's referring specifically to the Jews under the law. They were like children in bondage to the elements of the world. Sin, they couldn't be free of sin because it was their nature. But verse 4 says, <clears throat> see, we can also apply it to ourselves. Before we were born again, we too were in bondage to sickness and disease. We were in bondage to the sinful nature. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive, to redeem us, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, we are sons of God, his heirs, his offspring. He has sent forth his spirit into our hearts that cry, Oh, Abba, Father, our Father, Abba. Hallelujah. Therefore, we are no more servants, but now we are sons. In other words, we're not under the weak and beggarly elements in bondage to the world, to the earthly. But now we are sons. And if sons, then we are the actual heirs of God. Put your hand on yourself and say, I am an heir of God. How? Through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Going on down now. Paul says, It is written. Now he's going to begin to tell them the allegory. To show them two women. One who represents grace and forgiveness in the new birth and one who represents the law and the bondage to the sinful nature. It is written that Abraham had two sons, so he's going to even go back and use the example of Abraham. He is jumping clear over the period of the law and going back to Abraham and using his example. Abraham had two sons, the one by a bond maid, and the other by a free woman. He who was of the bond woman, now see, we're going to talk about your two births now. He who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh. Remember how Sarah and Abraham and Agar all got together and decided they were going to give God some help. <laughs> he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he who was of the free woman came by promise. Look at our salvation now. See, this is the fleshly. Jerusalem. This is the heavenly Jerusalem. So as it says here, the one son was born of the bondwoman. This is your first birth. When you were born the first time, you were born into bondage to sin. This represents your second birth. When you're born of the free woman and you are liberated from the sinful nature and what goes with it. He who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he who was born after the free woman was born of the promise. Which things represent an allegory? For these really represent two covenants, two covenants, one earthly, one heavenly. Which things are an allegory for these are two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai, the one from Mount Sinai. You have come. The one, here's our two now. 
the one covenant, the earthly covenant, and stop and think about it. The earthly Jerusalem is still living under the covenant from Sinai. And this earthly Jerusalem is still in bondage today with her children, in bondage to sin, in bondage to the elements of this world. The one from Mount Sinai which gendereth to bondage represents Hagar. So Paul is saying that this earthly Jerusalem represents Hagar and she is the bound woman, the woman in bondage. Which things are an allegory for these are two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai which gendereth to bondage, which represents Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. So the bondwoman, represented by Hagar, represents Mount Sinai, and that's what they're still living under, the law that was given at Mount Sinai. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answers to the Jerusalem, or is a type of the Jerusalem that now is and is in bondage with her children. <laughs> but the Jerusalem, which is above, is free, Paul goes on, which is the mother of us all. The, we weren't born. We were born under our first birth, just take it like this. We were in as much bondage as the earthly Jerusalem living under the law in the, with the sinful nature. When we were born the first time, we were born also, you could say, of the bondwoman. I think of my mother, for example. When I was born, when I was born, she wasn't born again. So she was still a woman in bondage to sin. When I was born again, I was born, this was my earthly mother. She was the bondwoman. She was in bondage to sin and all that goes with it. Under my second birth, I was born of the free woman, the Jerusalem, which is above. Paul specifically tells us that the heavenly Jerusalem is the mother of us all, and she is the free woman. So he actually called the heavenly Jerusalem our mother. God is our father. He said that over here in chapter 4, verse 7. God has sent his spirit forth into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. But we have been born from above. We have been born from the heavenly realm. We are offspring now of our father who lives here. In John 3, Jesus said, you must be born again. Another version of that says, you must be born from above. When you were born again, you were born from above. Now, the little men below, this represents you before you were born again. You had the sinful nature. You were in bondage to sin. You were in as much bondage as the earthly Jerusalem currently is. When you were born of the free woman, the heavenly Jerusalem, you got a new nature. You got the nature of a citizen of the heavenly Jerusalem. You became the heir of God and the joint heir with Jesus Christ. Now you see the light coming out of here? We're going to read over in Hebrews where it says, you have come unto the heavenly Jerusalem. Did you know that? When we read the verses, it says we were raised up and seated with Christ in heavenly places. But what does that mean? That means when you were born again, spiritually, you were you're, you changed positions from this to this, and you entered in to the heavenly Jerusalem, and you were seated with Jesus as a joint heir at the right hand of the Father. 
positionally. So I like that the way this shows the door of the welcoming, the welcoming light is going out to show us the way when we're born again to enter in to the heavenly Jerusalem and enjoy the fellowship that takes place there. Paul said, I pray for the family in heaven and earth. Let me turn my little light on. I've been using the sunlight and the sun's going down. <clears throat> Let's read some more here about these two women that represent two covenants and two mothers. I will begin again at verse 22. For as it is written, Abraham had two sons, the one by the bondwoman and the one by the free woman. He who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was of the promise. <clears throat> Which things are an allegory? So these two women are a story. They have a hidden meaning. They're going to tell us what was the definition of an allegory. An allegory is a story or poem that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning. These two women are an allegory, for they represent also two covenants. Two covenants. This Jerusalem is living by the covenant from Mount Sinai. This Jerusalem and you are living by the heavenly covenant, the new covenant in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Which things are an allegory for these two women represent two covenants, one from Mount Sinai, which genders bondage, bondage to sin, bondage to sickness, And this you can see in the mother Hagar. For Hagar represents Mount Sinai in Arabia and answers to the Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. About to get another light, I think. There we go. We're cooking now. But the Jerusalem, which is above, hallelujah, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren, that bearest not. That's Sarah. And break forth and cry, thou that travailest not, for the desolate hath many more children than she which has a, a, a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Did you know that? That you are a child of promise. God promised through prophecy to create a new creation, a second Adam race. And you are the fulfillment of that promise. For it is written, Rejoice thou that rejoice thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which has a husband. Now we, brethren, are as Isaac was, not as Hagar and Ishmael, but we are as Isaac was to Abraham and Sarah. We are the child of promise. A Sarah, Isaac came by promise. Ishmael was born of the flesh. But as he that was born of the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. <laughs> Isn't that true? People that aren't born again, they're born after the flesh the first time and they persecute us who've been born after the spirit. 
Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but we are children of the free. We are children of the free woman. Hallelujah. I love this part here. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman. Sickness is bondage. When you really see that you have been born again, you have been born of the heavenly Jerusalem. Oh, hallelujah. You've been born of the heavenly Jerusalem. You are superior. You are above the bondage that cities on earth are in, people on earth are in. You are free of the bondage. Again, let's look at it. The reason you're free is because you've been born you have been born of the heavenly Jerusalem. There is no sickness here. There is no uh, sin here. Habitual sinning. There is no confusion, no depression. All the things that are the offspring of this earthly realm, this woman that's in bondage, this earth that's still in bondage. Like Hagar was the bondwoman. She was a slave. She wasn't a free woman when she was with Abraham and Sarah. That's why she had to do what they told her when they wanted to have a child by her. But you, my brethren, you are the children of the free woman. So you don't have to put up with anything that is spawned by the bondwoman. Sickness and disease has been spawned by the bondwoman. This is a good healing scripture. Cast out the bond woman. Why? Because you have authority over the bond woman. You don't have to put up with the bond woman. You're above the bond woman. You're born from above, from the heavenly Jerusalem. You have authority. Let's look at this now. I made a little list over here in Hebrews 12. This is powerful. Hebrews 12, verses 18 to 24, we have two lists, and you know how I like comparisons. And that's kind of what this is here in Galatians 4. It's a comparison of twos, bondage and freedom, earthly and heavenly. Heavenly, Cast out, you've been born of the free woman, the woman that's above. Oh, you're over all, if you could only just see it. Tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And especially when it says here, cast out the bondwoman. What does that mean? Things of the bondwoman that want to work in your flesh, that want to work in your mind. They, they're earthborn. They're born of the spirit of this world. Go back and listen to the video. If God isn't putting this sickness on me, then what is it? I did that just a couple days ago, and I go all through that. So this whole earth is still in bondage. It says that in Romans. The whole earth is groaning and travailing because it's still under the bondage of the slave woman. It's a slave to sin. It's like Hagar was a slave to Abraham and Sarah, and she had an offspring, and her offspring was not the children of promise. And right now, Genesis 3.15 is coming to me. That was the promise that God gave to send his son to crush the head of the serpent. The powers that deceived Adam and Eve and brought this world. It was like you could almost say the devil is another parallel to Hagar. And he birthed the sin and the sickness this world now as it is, is the offspring of him. But that's another story we won't go into at the moment. But over in Hebrews, I love these verses over here in Hebrews. We're talking about your position and why you don't have to put up with anything that has come from this world that's in bondage. And ultimately, what's in this world, Hebrews, or 1 John 1, 5, 19, has come from the wicked one, because Adam released the enemy, the world, to the enemy. Hebrews chapter 12 Verses 18 to 24 says, now that you've been born again, you haven't come to the law. You haven't come to Mount Sinai. You haven't come to the earthly Jerusalem that's in bondage. No, 
<laughs> you haven't come to a place where you can be, where you're terrified of God. Just listen to these things here. Hebrews 12. You are not come unto the mount, Mount Sinai, that might be touched. You can't touch the heavenly Jerusalem, but you could touch. He's comparing here, Mount Sinai now. You're going to see it. You could say this earthly Jerusalem that's in bondage with her children was built on Mount Sinai because they're living by the law still. The Jewish people are still living by the law that was given at Mount Sinai. They're not born again. They're still like this, and they're still in bondage to sin because they haven't come to the heavenly Jerusalem. They haven't been born from above. But we, Paul's writing to Christians, we haven't come unto this mount, Mount Sinai, that might not be touched. No, we haven't come to this mount that burned with fire, and blackness, and darkness, and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words. The voice was so terrifying that the people begged not to hear it anymore. <laughs> Even Moses, it says, was so terrified, he was quaking with fear. So this is the state of the earthly Jerusalem. It says, but you, brethren, you, the born again, the born from above, seated in this heavenly Jerusalem positionally over this and everything that goes with it. This, These are short lists that I'm just using for the bedtime story, but this could be drawn out. Everything of uh, the curse that goes under this, that was loosed under Adam, could all be listed under this. But we don't have time to do it. We're talking about healing, though. He, sickness is under this side right here. But you've been born from here now. You're seated up here. You have God's nature that has triumphed over this nature and the sickness that's involved in this whole realm right here. You've triumphed over it. You've crossed the line from death into life. You've changed kingdoms. You've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of God's dear son. You are seated, raised up and seated together with him in his heavenly places, in the heavenly Jerusalem. Oh, you'll hear it here. You'll hear it. You are come, you the born again, have come unto Mount Zion, the city of this is another name for it. Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. Oh, I hope that you're just feeling goosebumps all over like I am right now. We've come. You came through this entrance. You entered in to the powers of the world to come. You are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem. And you've come to an innumerable company of angels. So many is the host of angels, they cannot be counted. You've come there. You have come, come unto it, come unto it. How? Your spirit, you were born again. Physically, we haven't come there yet, but one day we will. But right now, you, the real you, has come to this place that you've been born from. You have come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, unto the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. Those that have gone on, that's where they've assembled. That's why Paul said, I prayed for the whole family in heaven and in earth. So here's the family that's gone on, the general assembly and church of the firstborn that's here, and the rest of it is down here on earth. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. We've come, they've come, we've come to God now. Over here, they can't come to God. They're still at Mount Sinai. They're still under the voice that makes them tremble. But oh, we now see the doors open. We've been invited to come unto God. 
Hallelujah, our Heavenly Father. Oh, our Father, which art in heaven, Paul said, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah, as it is here in the heavenly Jerusalem. You've come to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Oh, all those that have died being born again, they're here. They've been perfected now. They've passed out of this earth that's in bondage with, their cho with its children. And they've entered in. They're living in the freedom. Oh, hallelujah. That complete freedom of the redeemed. And also... Hallelujah. Are you ready for this? You've come unto Jesus, the mediator. Oh, this is where Jesus lives. You've come unto Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. Oh, hallelujah. And now we're on sacred and holy ground. And you've come unto the blood. The blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the things of Abel. Abel's blood cried out for vengeance. When God came down and asked Cain, where's your brother? He said, am I my brother's keeper? And God said, the blood of your brother cries to me from the ground. Abel's blood cried for vengeance. Jesus' blood, hallelujah, the blood of sprinkling speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Jesus' blood doesn't cry for vengeance. It cries forgiveness. It cries reconciliation. It cries healing. It cries binding up the brokenhearted. It cries setting the captives free. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, the me, you have come unto Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and you have come to the blood, his blood, that was sprinkled on the mercy seat that speaks for you in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Just looking at our list here. <clears throat> I made a couple little lists. This right here was Mount Sinai. This is that compares to the earthly Jerusalem it's inapproachable. It's covered with blackness, tempest all around it, and fire, and a thundering, terrifying voice. Hagar, Ishmael, the servant girl, born of the flesh and not of the promise. This is the allegory we're speaking now. Speaking by allegory, the two women, the two Jerusalems, the two Mount Sinai's. Mount Sinai, Mount Zion. Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem. Hallelujah. You are come. You notice it says you are, you have come to the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem, you've come to God, the judge of all. You've come to the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus speaking. The blood of Jesus speaking better things than the blood of Abel. Healing for you. Peace of mind for you. Joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All these things that salvation means. The blood of Jesus speaks salvation for you. You have come to a heavenly host of angels that cannot be numbered. You have come to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. And you have come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. That's why Paul was telling the Galatians, don't go back like the Judaizers are wanting you to, and live under the old covenant. Live from under, under the bondage that comes from Mount Sinai. Because now, you, through the new Jerusalem, 
since you've been born of the new Jerusalem. You have come to Jesus, who is the mediator of the new covenant, the covenant sealed in his blood. So here we have again, we're talking about twos. Two women that represent two covenants. The old covenant that tended to bondage, exposed our bondage to sin and couldn't set us free from it. And the new covenant that Jesus is the mediator of, where we were liberated, we were set free, and we can come freely. It says in Hebrews, come freely, come boldly to the throne of grace. <laughs> I just love this picture here again. Oh, yes. See that wonderful picture. The door is open. Come on in, the Father says. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come boldly to the throne of grace through the new and living way. Thank you, Jesus. Your mother is a free woman. The Jerusalem, which above, is free. And she is the mother of all that have been born again. We have been born from the heavenly Jerusalem. And you say, well, I don't like that idea of a mother. Well, take it up with Paul and take it up with Jesus who gave him this allegory. Personally, I'm going to believe Paul. I'm going to believe that the heavenly Jerusalem is now my mother. I was born once of the flesh, the will of man, but I was born again of the will of God. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes you may have grown up, you hear about people that grew up without a father and then they develop the relationship with God and they get born again and God becomes the father they never had. Well, the same thing can hold true for a mother, those that have never had a mother. The heavenly Jerusalem becomes the mother of those that are born again that never had a mother. She'll love on you. She'll embrace you. She'll comfort you. She'll wipe away your tears. She'll bind up your brokenhearted. The spirit of a mother is pouring forth from the heavenly Jerusalem. Hallelujah. And she will be to you as a mother. You have a father. You have a brother. You have a heavenly father, a heavenly brother, and a heavenly mother. The Jerusalem which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. I've gotten into situations with sickness and disease or just anything, but because we're talking about healing here. But you can apply it to whatever you would like that wants to hold you in bondage. Stop a moment and think. Now, wait a minute. I've been born of a heavenly mother. I don't have to put up with what's coming from the bond woman anymore. Use the allegory to your benefit. Take Paul's words, read them over till they become real on the inside of you and you can see clearly the two lists, the two covenants, the two women, the bondage and the freedom. The Jerusalem, all you have to do is just turn the TV on and look at the Jerusalem that now is. It's totally in bondage with its children that live in it. But when their heart turns to the Lord, the scriptures say, and the veil of unbelief is taken away, then they get the liberty of the free woman. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, 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 I do worship you. I do worship you. I do worship you. The heavenly Jerusalem, which is above, is the mother of us all. Cast out the bondwoman, for the children of the bondwoman will never be children of the free woman. God doesn't play tricks on you and give you something that's going to make you be in bondage. Bondage comes from the earthly Jerusalem. Freedom 
comes from being a citizen of the heavenly Jerusalem. Something for you to think about in our little story tonight. If you are born again, I have to read it to you again. You have come unto Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come. Read it. Hebrews 12, 18 through 24 gives you the two list comparison. You have come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem. You've come to the city. You have come. You're not waiting to die to get there. If you've been born from above, you are seated there in heavenly places. You, what's in you, the Zoe life in you, is connected to the, is from the Zoe life that exists there. You have come to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to God, the judge of all. You've come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to his blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. You've come to the spirits of just men made perfect, those that have gone on before us. You've come to a heavenly host of angels that cannot be numbered. You've come to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. Right now, you are already a part of the church that's in heaven. You have come unto the general assembly and the church of the firstborn. Here a while back, I was talking in one of the videos about the scripture here in Hebrews 6, 5 that says, we have tasted the good word of God and the powers of of the world to come. Since you've been born again, you are already tasting the power. That's what caused you to be born again, the power of the world to come, the heavenly Jerusalem. One day, Revelation says it's going to come down from God out of heaven, and God will dwell with us. He will be our God, and we will be his people. But you now, since you've been born again, you've had that new birth inside. You've received that new life. You already are tasting the power of this world to come. That's what healing is. Healing is tasting the power of the world to come. Oh, dear. The subject is just so massive and so impactful. I cannot even find the words to explain it, to tell the story of it all. So I will turn it over to the Holy Spirit, and I will turn it over to you to look at these two portions of Scripture, Galatians chapter 4 and Hebrews chapter 12. I'll put the exact Scriptures in the description in the video posts. Oh, Father, such power of the world to come that we have been born of. Oh, Father, help us to cast out anything, that any residue of the bondwoman that is in us or tries to attach itself to us, Father, that's operating in this world that is still in bondage with her children. Father, help everyone to understand that the Bible is a two-leaved book and to keep it simple. We just have to divide the page down the middle and line up the truth according to life and death, blessing and cursing, sickness and health, righteousness and sin, hell and heaven, Mount Zion, and, and Mount Sinai. Oh, Father, help this little illustration that is so full of your power from the world to come. Let it come through simply in their understanding. 
And Lord Jesus, I give you the praise for it. And Father, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you for freedom from the bondage, Father, of sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. Father, I see their freedom. I see them whole. I see them leaping like calves in the stall. I see the man who is blind seeing. I hear the, those whose tongue is dumb singing your praises. Oh, Father, let the truth go forth like a beacon in the darkness, Lord. Let it sever them as they cling to it and use it as a sword. Let it sever them, Father, from the offspring of the bondwoman. And Lord Jesus, I give you the praise this night. Father, where I haven't been clear, you make it clear. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Well, I definitely cast this seed out upon your heart, and I pray that the Lord will give you the understanding and let it grow mightily in your life, that you will be so heavenly minded that you're some earthly good to yourself. <laughs> God bless you all.